Hey everybody, welcome back. This is Project Kids Excellent Adventure number seven. Michael Wan is with me, but before we get started for today's jam session, I'm just gonna get a, give a little update on the summer camp. Um, the last episode was the public hour of the summer camp. We just had that about a week and a half ago. And it was the first time we did it. So it was kind of uh, cool to meet the people who showed up for the workshop portion. And also just to sort of see you don't really know how you want to do something sometimes until you get in it and see what it's going to be like. So the way we're going to be doing it going forward, at least for now, because I think this will morph and change over time, is that when we do the summer camp episodes, there'll be a topic that we are talking about. And then the workshop that happens right after that will be exactly related to sort of what we talked about in the first uh, in the first in the first hour, where it's just the conversation between Michael and I, um, we're still dig you know kind of sussing out all the details on that. Um, but for the next one, we're going to be talking about dreams, synchronicities, telepathy, and uh, what was the other thing I said? Symbol symbolism, right? And we're, there's going to be an assignment that sort of goes out beforehand before the workshop, so that we can workshop some of the ideas around this. So if you are interested in participating in the Project Kids Summer Camp, please uh, contact me at, like my email is in the description box below. So contact me, I will give you details and you guys can join us. The public, at the, the first hour where it's just Michael and I talking will be available so people can kind of see the kinds of things that are going on, decide if they wanna join. The first episode is up, I posted it last week. Um, and join us at the time that is right for you, but we're gonna be doing a lot of really interesting things there. And um, yeah, so that's the update on summer camp. And now is just today is just a full uh, GM session between Michael and I. Um, there'll be an hour here publicly and then an hour over on Patreon. And uh, welcome back, Michael, how you doing? I'm doing well, thank you for having me. Uh, welcome to everyone who's watching. And uh, uh, I don't know if we talked about this before, but we've got like the same haircut, right? <laughs> <laughs> and, like, because, because it's been brought to my attention, like there's a, there's a, um, like a, a reflection, like a similarity, a mirroring that you and I share. And yep. so that was in my mind, and I'm looking at like I changed the way which 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 I see this on the screen. I normally don't see myself; I just see you, and I have it now balanced. I'm like, oh, we got the same haircut. We both like we both. <laughs> I just find that kind of interesting, and particularly as we're going to get in deep today about some of like the more the similarities and all these synchronicities that we're seeing in our lives and and um, in the world in general. So I just want to start out with something easy with the hair. Yeah, we do. It's been noted by many people that we sort of look alike, that there's some similarities. You know, we have, you know, both dark hair and light eyes, and we both got the German and Jewish kind of background, and, you know, we both have veiny arms, and we both, <laughs> right? There, there's lots of similarities, but yes. I don't see it, but I get, but, but it's like, you're right. It's like, I hear it from other people, so it's, it's, that's, yeah. it's fun. I gotta, I, I, it's nice to see things with fresh eyes. Yeah, absolutely. So anyway, all right. So we're going to do a little, we have a couple of little things that we're going to get into here sort of in the first hour. But where I'm going to start was when we did the last episode, which was the summer camp episode, summer camp, summer camp episode one, when I was going to post it, I uh, was looking for an image to use, right? Just something, you know, I do weird ways of like that I decide how I'm going to use images for things. And I just was like, okay, I'm looking for a particular kind of thing that has a feel of summer camp in Chatsworth. And so I looked up just the name of the camp, right, Branch Club, Summer Camp Chatsworth. And I did find this uh, animated picture that I kind of used that as, the, as the thumbnail for the video on YouTube, right? But when I was looking for that, like something pretty strange popped up. So for me, when I'm really digging deep into um, my like programming, right? The, the projects that I was involved with, the things that come up over and over again, at least for the younger portion of my life, are the summer camp, the gymnastics, and then my involvement in Hollywood, right? Like I did acting and stuff when I was younger. Later in my life came the dance music and that portion of, of, the, of, the, of the mind control or whatever. But to me, like, you know, there's... Um, I didn't like, I went to gymnastics over here in Van Nuys where I live now. And that seemed very separate from like my summer camp life and my Hollywood life. But there were small connections between each of them. 
the people that ran the, the summer camp, the ladies, the, the ladies, the, the wife and the daughter, they were gymnastics coaches. They were gymnastics teachers. And there was definitely, in some of the things that went on at the camp, use made of my sort of gymnastics ability, right? And they even would, the counselors from the camp would even sometimes come over to my gym on the other side of town and watch me do gymnastics. So I thought, so there was the connection there. And then like with gymnastics, like I did Hollywood stuff as well. Sometimes I did gymnastics-y things in the Hollywood thing. And sometimes there was opportunities for uh, print and film jobs that were based on me having gymnastics ability. So like there were some connections between the three things, even though they were g g locationally different and with different people sometimes involved, right? And one of the things that I have described some of my, uh, experiences at the summer camp, right? As like, like, the, like the second layer of memories about some things about the summer camp was that I think that they were having some of us who were part of a project or program there do like Hunger Games style exercises there. Like I've described it that way to Laura when I talked to Nish and whatever and explain kind of things. Like I remember vividly they're being like, you know, okay, so you're like, basically you're kind of set free on this ranch. There's a ranch over there called Spawn Ranch. I think you noticed it when we looked it up. And it's basically, you need to like make it through the night and get to the place you're trying to go, right? And I have memories of like hiding under rocks and sleeping, you know, or whatever, and or being in certain areas and whatnot. And they're not like, there are those memories of like the things that are sort of outside of your consciousness, but I've described it as Hunger Games exercises, right? <clears throat> and there's also like been, you know, like obviously whenever you're talking about like mind control or the reality that you're living in, right? Like the term, the matrix comes up, right? And like one of the things I always thought about gymnastics was like the kinesthetic, like if you ever seen, there was like a movie when I was a kid, right? Where like a person was breaking into like a room at a museum to steal a piece of art. And the way that they were able to do it because there was like a, matrix of like lasers around this thing that were the alarm detection system and the way that they oceans 12 i i don't know if i've seen oceans 12 but it might that have was it the guy was a cat burglar and he moved through uh, actually that was done in two movies it was done in oceans 12 and there was an earlier film also but yes like okay. the movements through the the laser lines so i thought that like part of the reason for the gymnastics training is to be able to move through sort of these laser lines right so one thing that I was aware of and I always thought was odd was um, in recent years, there's a gym in Chatsworth. So I grew up in Chatsworth, which is where I went to summer camp, but it's not where I went to gymnastics. But now there's a gym in Chatsworth called Matrix Gymnastics, right? And so when I'm, I, I literally look up Ranch Club Summer Camp Chatsworth and Matrix Gymnastics comes up and their tagline is move with purpose. What better purpose could there be to move with than to avoid the angles of right kind of thing? So yeah. I thought that was interesting. That pinged me. But then the thing that pinged me even more, this is an interesting, all the stuff that comes up when you search Ranch Club Clinton Camp Chatsworth is interesting. It includes the obituaries of Leon Fenwick we talked last time, the, the, the gymnastics stuff, all sorts of stuff comes up. But I found, and this is, gonna, this is kind of crazy, right? I, I'm going to pull it up right now. There was this. This to me was the most fascinating. I'm gonna screen, open it up all the way. Oh, is it gonna let me do it? Hold on a second. Uh, all right, let's go back to the other way of looking at it. Let's look at it here. Okay, I'm gonna screen share. So this was the most interesting find to me. There's a poster. So there's another gym in Chatsworth called Gymnastics World. And I'll tell you why that's interesting in a second. I can't seem to make this bigger, but it's a poster for 2014 gym, summer camp at Gymnastics World, which is in Chatsworth as well, called the Hunger Games. They're calling the summer camp the Hunger Games. Yeah. So that's fast. So Matrix Gymnastics and Gymnastics World are both in Chatsworth. There seems to be some correlation between them. I can't figure out what it is. Like I've seen people who, like I have people that I'm friends with on Facebook whose kids go to one, but they seem to post things from both places, right? So like there is some correlation. I don't know if like they're owned by the same people and one, one is the recreational spot and one is the more competitive spot. I, I don't know or if one is doing men's gymnastics and one is doing women's gymnastics. I'm not sure quite what's going on there. But 
I also, so Gymnastics World opened in Chatsworth like sometime in the mid 2000s, right? Back in the 90s for one year, I left Los Angeles and went and moved to Tucson, Arizona, where I worked in a gym called Gymnastics World. While I was working at this gym called Gymnastics World in Tucson, I had some of the first like real kind of bleed through experiences where I knew something funny was going on in my life, right? Like I would find myself, I would wake up driving my car, I would be like, just come to driving my car in an area of town that like I didn't recognize, right? And, and, and it was having all sorts of bizarre sort of experiences that I didn't know what they meant at the time, but they were odd. And now in hindsight, I understand it, this is, you know, matches up with like all the kind of stuff from people being an altar or being taken out to participate in trainings or projects or whatever, right? But it was while I was there at Gymnastics World. And, and Gymnastics World kind of in Tucson had a little bit of a uh, time of, you know, being popular because for a period of time, Carrie Strug, who was the hero of the 1996 Olympics was training there. Right? So I don't know what this all is, but it's bizarre. Like, I, don't, I just can't even understand unless like, like, this is some spitting out of the simulation or whatever, right? But this pulls together this whole idea of summer camp, gymnastics, a hunger games, sort of competing for your survival kind of thing, right? Like, why would this come up there? I just found that to be you know, really weird. Why would you name your gymnastics summer camp the Hunger Games? Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, Have you done research into the aspect, part of the stuff that goes on with the mind control programming and the ritual abuse? Like some people re refer to it as like chase the maiden or whatever, but it's basically the Hunger Games. It's basically, mm -hmm. yeah. you, you know what I'm mm -hmm. talking about. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. I know what you're talking about. Uh, I, I'm sorry, I, I was paused because there's some other things which you just showed me, which, which like, uh, which I'm trying to like kind of um, ground for a moment because I don't know if, when you first started write, when you first started talking, I don't know if you noticed, I picked up and I wrote some notes. Yeah. Because you were, you, 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 when you brought up the acting, I remembered, I totally forgot about this. When I was in seventh grade, I went to like this, like, uh, like, a. uh, uh a Johns Hopkins um, gifted and talented theater camp, which had, uh, in in Maryland, which was um, go back to pull your screen back up, pull your screen okay, back up. Okay, yeah. you just uh, you know, uh, I have something to say about Maryland, and if we have the same thing to say about Maryland, I'm gonna okay. Go ahead. So I was like, I'm listening. To you say that I'm remembering all of these things. And so um, I wrote that down. I wanted to bring that up. I was like the acting and I remember going there. And I remember like the overnight camp I talked about before was when I was uh, going into second grade or possibly third grade. And this one I was in middle school, but I don't remember any real overnight camps between. So I'm going through that. I'm thinking about all the things you're saying, Hunger Games, the age. And I'm like, where was that? Where was that um, camp held? Where was that camp held? It was held at a college. It was held at a college. Oh my so God. I remember it was held at Towson University. Okay. So look, at your, look at your yes. picture. No, I know. That's what I'm going to talk about too. So the one thing that just popped up to me over here is I'm like, oh my God. So when I was, okay. So I had this gymnastics coach when I was, uh, remember we talked about being magnetically attracted to a place, right? So when I was 16, like I had, that's when I had this neck injury that sort of changed the trajectory of things. But I also had this person who showed up in my life as a coach at the gym. And we were kind of friends and she was sort of my coach. And she ended up taking a job at West Virginia University, right? And then I decided to go there but how i decided to go there like okay so i at the time so i had had this neck injury and i had quit so sort of temporarily quit gymnastics right okay. and she had moved just moved away and gone to west to morgantown to coach uh, to be the student assistant coach at at west virginia university like they were paying for her to go to grad school and in turn she was coaching right and i went to visit her and I went to visit her during the competition season. And I went with her and the team to a gymnastics meet at Towson University. And when I came back from this trip, I decided that I was going back to gymnastics and I was moving to, West, I was gonna go to West Virginia University. 
right? So like I was not doing gymnastics anymore. And after going and having this weekend and seeing the team and going to this meet at Towson University, something, compl I was doing perfect. I was like into hip hop dancing and stuff at the time. I had stopped doing gymnastics. I was into dancing. I thought I wanted to be a professional dancer. All that stopped. I'm going back to gymnastics and I'm going to West Virginia University, which then lands me in this area over by your interesting area and Randy Moggins interesting area and where I'm traveling constantly to Washington, D.C. and Pittsburgh and some of these places that I've talked about, right? But Towson University, so you and I were both there, right? It's kind of, so this, there's this web here between gymnastics. Yeah, yeah now, now, like, I'm at a loss for words. This is too, that, like, Towson is not like a big school. Like, nope. Towson is not, like, that's a, that's a, that's, this is strange. We but it is, something. it is a mind control school, and you want to know how I know? Tell me so, how you know. There was stuff in, the, in the, the alternative media a couple of years ago. Like, remember when the white identitarian thing became really big a couple of years ago? Like, all, like all the whole, like, alt-right and the, uh, I yes. guess, Europa and, like, the, you know, white nationalist kind of stuff? The, like there was a guy who was part like the main one of the main guys in that sort of identity Europa or like white nationalist on campus movement. He started his organization at Towson State University. All right. Or Towson All right. University. So there's some. Uh, my cat's showing up. Yeah, go right ahead. Go go there. No no so no no she just came in and is meowing ferociously at whatever we're talking about here. But um, so there you know. I'm going, to, I'm going to show you the rest of this page because lots of things popped up on this page. So I, the search was Ranch Club Summer Camp Chatsworth, right? And it gives me things, it gives me like the top stuff I expect to see, things about those schools in Chatsworth we looked at last time, right? Things about um, Leon Fenwick, right? <laughs> but it also, start, there's this like um, John Carroll Ranch Club Orbit Country Club for Boys and Girls. Right, that's interesting. Club Orbit, we're talking. Remember, I've said that I think they're doing the secret space program at the base under the you know, is, is John Carroll Ranch. Is that in so before you go any deeper, why the hell did Towson show up? What does that have to do with any like how did that trigger the algorithm? I don't know, like I have no idea. The only thing so, can we go up to the top where we saw the Towson again? So, the, like, so <laughs> your search is Ranch Club, Ranch Club Chatsworth. Right, and so where do we see it? Where where did it have Towson? Here. here, but my point in showing you this. So I'm going back to the top, and I'm going to tell you all the funny and weird things that I find on this page search that don't really seem to have anything to do with just looking for Ranch Club Chatsworth. Right. And if we can figure out what the connective thread is here. Now we have to remember, I'm searching for this on my computer, and we know that Google shows a different internet to everybody based on the, how they've profiled you. Right. Okay. So we have to keep that in mind, but still, unless there truly is, I haven't, you know, let's, let's just go through it. Okay, so there's this John Carroll Ranch with Club Orbit, right? Why would you be thinking about Orbit at a ranch? Unless, right, my, my assertion right. that the, what they call the secret space program is taking place underneath summer camps, uh, all, you know, around the country, right? I've, I've said that for years. I've said that the, uh, the only way that space exists is if it's underground in Chatsworth. <laughs> um, okay, so water and power associates. We we're talking all this stuff about water plants and electric plants and stuff like that, right? Um, okay, hold on, let's see. Ranch Club Camp Chatsworth, uh, Summer Camp Chatsworth. Um, okay, lots of things for Baltimore. Red hot summer camps at Roland Park Country School. And I noticed this when I was going through it because you were from Maryland. Why is there a connection between Chatsworth, California and Maryland? So we have two connections already. We have Towson, which is in Maryland, and we have red hot summer camp in Maryland. Those aren't Maryland, those are Baltimore, Maryland. So Maryland's a state, it's got a lot of different parts. These are the same locations within Maryland, okay? It's Baltimore, we're gonna get, yeah. gonna, when, when, you hand it, when you hand the baton to me, I wanna go into Towson, Baltimore, and, and mind control. We're gonna get a little so bit deeper. Towson, Towson is a suburb of Baltimore, correct? It's within the Baltimore uh, met metropolitan statistical area. Like, so yes. Just like Chatsworth is to Los Angeles. So Towson yes. to Baltimore, what Chatsworth is to Los Angeles. 
So there's lots of like 10 minutes or 20 minutes away from like the inner harbor downtown Baltimore. But yeah. go on, yes. So another thing for water and power. So now my question is how are water and power, the water and power company associated to summer camps? Because why would looking up summer camps bring up the water and power department? Right. And we've already like it's been established that like a lot of pr programs that pe are, are hidden in like the Department of Energy and things like that because people wouldn't think to look there. Right. Like uh, if you look at um, if you watch the show Stranger Things, right, that land, all that stuff was going on at the Department of Energy outside of town. There, Right. All that mind control programming they were doing. OK, so here's another Baltimore camp camp summer programs. Baltimore's child. Look at the and they all have sun themes. Look, there's a sun. Yeah, there's a sun. OK, so um, struggling with alcohol and drugs, of course, I have talked extensively about some of the issues with drugs. I think they drugged us at the summer camp and that was part of my attraction for drugs later. Does it, so is that, uh, is that a, a California place or is that Maryland where that I can't see from I can't see that detail. I just see it says camp. It doesn't say anything. Oh, 818, it doesn't tell us. Okay. 818 is Chatsworth. That 818 would be Southern California. OK. All right. So over here, Camp Tall Timbers, also Baltimore. Wow. Okay, so then we're here, more water and power, more Leon Fenwick's obituary, lots of it, right? Um, there's lots of things here about Chatsworth Park, which, I, you know, which is where the camp was. Um, let's see. Nature camps, Baltimore's child. Look at the bluebirds. There are bluebirds. Now, of course, Project Bluebird was what turned into artichoke, it would turn into MK yeah. Ultra, right? So we have nature camp with bluebirds here. Beth L, early childhood program camps, Baltimore. So that it ties in the Jewish connection, right? Like that's kind of interesting. Are all summer camps like you know that's that's a stereotype, right? You know, like the 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 Jewish kids in the summer camps, like they you know probably in the forties and the fifties. That's like they're they're they go hand in hand. Yeah. So here's the Matrix Gymnastics Move with Purpose. Why would that show up on Ranch? Yeah. They're both in Chatsworth, but why is that showing up on the Ranch Club thing? They're showing pictures of birthday parties at gyms in Chatsworth. Okay. So here's a summer camp in Silmar, which is not far from um, uh, Chatsworth, but they're showing these kids painting Batman and wearing a Batman shirt. Um, I've talked extensively with Elisa E about Batman programming. And we've also noticed that we found that some, if you cross section the spinal column from up above, it looks like the Batman insignia. Right, and we've talked about how a lot of the aspects of the programming are stored at various places along the spine and in the chakra system. I've talked about that extensively with Elisa E, who you know has one of the most interesting mind control stories you can imagine. Her books are pretty crazy. If you haven't read them, I recommend it, Michael. Um, more Matrix Gymnastics. Um, there's a lot of things about Chatsworth's history here. Chatsworth Hills Homesteaders. Here's, oh, J-Camps. That sounds like a Jewish thing, right? J-Camp. Yeah, they're also in Baltimore. But you're in Baltimore. Why is this, why is it Baltimore and, and, and Chatsworth coming up, right? I mean, both of my family lines, both my mother and my father grew up in Baltimore. Okay, look at this. Summer Camps Mayor Matrix Gymnastics. That wasn't the search. And look, that looks like a Johnny Depp from the... Uh, Alice in Wonderland movie. Yeah. Right? And that Alice in Wonderland programming is a kind of programming. And then here's just something that says Baltimore's Child Summer Camp Programs. All right. Um, oh, here's look, this is hilarious. Look at this. Planet Bravo's Technotainment Summer, summer Camp, right? So here's another reference to space and to techno music, which I've also talked about how the programming I received at this place in Chatsworth marked like the anechoic chamber and all the sound and light stuff mimics a small version of like what a rave is later, right? Being in a big black box of a room with sound and light being blared at you, right? So that shows up there and that's at Porter Ranch, which is another part of Chatsworth. Um, let's see what else we got here. Bard to the Baltimore Shakespeare Factory. Is that where you went? BSF, Bard to the Bone, Summer Camp Program, Baltimore. Uh, no. Uh, but what I'm seeing is there's a school in Baltimore called Chatsworth School. 
And that is where the, that's where the link is, like in terms of words. But as we're seeing, like, you know, it's more, well, go on, yes. Okay, so here's the Towson. So the club gymnastics, I actually worked at the club gymnastics for a short time. That used to be in Northridge. Then it moved to Chatsworth. I think it's out of business. Uh, that was uh, like that was kind of where all the kids who couldn't cut it at some of the other gyms would end up at a club, right? Like I never went there as a gymnast. I worked there for a few, uh, two, maybe about two months. It was not the kind of competitive space that I prefer, right? So Towson University. Then there's a map of coronavirus cases in Chatsworth, right? So that's kind of interesting. There's the Hunger Games deal. Here's a, now here's a picture of that Chatsworth house in in England, at, in Devonshire, England. So now yeah. we have Chatsworth in both. I grew up in Chatsworth, right? Like uh, you're in Baltimore, there's a Chatsworth school there. And then we have the Chatsworth house in England that has this same kind of thing over a river that your Susquehanna has, right? In Susquehanna, I'm gonna talk, we talked, we brought a little bit on the last one about the similarities, Susquehanna, Santa Susana, right. Susquehanna River, right? There's some similarities on the things on your map. So we have, um, mm -hmm. for some reason, the, Nor the, Chat the Simi Valley Police Department shop, it says North Northridge Chatsworth Simi Valley Police Department. That's Simi Valley is the next, Northridge is on one side of Chatsworth, Simi is on the other. Here's another camp in Baltimore, Go Gouch. I can't see the whole thing. Go, Go Goucher. Goucher, yes, yes. Goucher. Okay, so he look at this. Capital Camp is also in Baltimore, and look at the writing underneath there. Capital Camps, that's some sort of, also the sun, it's Jewish, it's Hebrew. There's a tree, a menorah with the tree on it, and the cabin, so the Jewish sleepaway camps. <sighs> okay, this is fucking really weird. So I, like, I eat at this place all the time. It is not in Chatsworth. It's called the local peasant. And why is that coming up under Camp Chats Ranch? I eat at this restaurant like for a couple a few years ago when I was really starting to uncover some of this. I was eating at this restaurant at least once a week. And it's not in Chatsworth. No, this this one, the one I was going to all the time, is in West Hills, which is on the other side of Santa Susana Pass. Like if you take Santa Susana Pass or Valley Circle, about eight or ten miles, it'll take you close to this. Okay, um, so locationally it makes sense, but why would it show up in the Ranch Club search for the Ranch Club? Right? Here's an interesting one: gymnastics summer camps, Camp Winter Rainbow. Look at this little like wizard that's in there. Yeah. Gymnastics summer camp. It doesn't say where it is, but we've, I was in a movie called Over the Rainbow when I was a kid. We've talked about rainbow programming. Uh, you know, that's part of the Alice in Wonderland programming. What is this little wizard with the pyramid hanging off the end of his hat? But Masaki was talking about this. We're, Masaki's going to be on Conspiracy Cocktail next time, and we're going to talk about some of this connection between cone heads and pyramids, right? But look at this. Look at kind of all the symbolism that's stacked into this. Yeah. That's pretty interesting. Oh, that's interesting. So Laura searched, did you do this on DuckDuckGo? Yeah. Laura did a search for Ranch Club Summer Camp Chatsworth on DuckDuckGo. And she gets a completely different set of things. I mean, an entirely different set of things. Although there are some similar stuff, a few similar types of things, but it's a completely different search result. That's, That's kind of interesting. Maryland does come up. But Maryland comes up in that too. So there's stuff in here about COVID-19. Stages Music Arts Camp, Baltimore's Child. Look at that pyramid with the microphone in it. As the A. I mean, this just goes on and on. We could roll down here for probably till the end of time and pull, pulling things up. Okay, now they're showing uh, below here this is the school I went to as a kid. Okay, here, this is, so I went to Edremont School right here. This is the school I went to when I'm a kid. Oh, I should see if I can find that. I found a picture, okay. I went to the school as a kid that was like a regular schoolhouse looking thing when I was a kid, and now they have it all done up like a castle. But somewhere in this thing, because I saw it when I was searching for it, they show a picture right here of Edremont with a pool, 
right? Look at this. When I went to Egremont, this pool, there, there was not a pool up top. There was a pool underground, right? There was this area. So like when I would stay at extended daycare, I've talked about this before. There was this bathroom that was underground and it was pink. And I remember being taken there one time and giving some yucky thing to drink, some kind of like grape syrup. But when I was down there going to this bathroom, there was an underground pool under Egremont. And I was like, oh, this is weird. Why, why would they keep the pool underground? Right, right? And now there's a pool on the campus up top. But there wasn't when I went there. There was an underground pool though, right? And this weird, remember the like, you know, that kind of like weird pink tiles and like aqua blue tiles they had in the 50s and stuff like that. It was that kind of tile around the pool. And of course, like, you know, I've talked extensively about the memories of like underwater breathing and underground, like, uh, uh, you know, like uh, underwater training and stuff that were part of the mind control thing. So it was interesting that there was an underground pool there. Now it's up top. It made me think of that. Um, but back to the stages art thing. So in the same scroll as the stages art thing, there's a picture of my school, the private school I went to in Chatsworth, Edremont School. And then there's this picture of Porter Ranch Gas Leak. Okay, so a couple of years ago, there was this gas leak at Porter Ranch, right? And they were trying to get everybody off of that property. And the property where all this was happening was the, one of the areas that when I was doing my walking and my journeying, you know, we talked about last time, I remember I, I, I was exercising in this area and recalled some experiences I had as a kid there that this was like, or even a little older than a kid, spots where we would meet up to go on missions or tasks. And I had some memories. And it's actually one of the areas where there's like, one of these overlays that I can't seem to find in my waking life there, right? And it happened in this area where they were saying now there's a gas leak. And remember, over the other side of Chatsworth where I went to camp, there was a radiation leak. But in some of the video that came out, remember last summer, there was that big earthquake here in Los Angeles that they said was really, they were blowing up that base at China Lake and clearing out mm -hmm. all this stuff. So in a video that was about that, they showed that there, what, there was a base underneath Porter Ranch. And this was like, this matches exactly the area where I was walking and having exercising, like exercising and having some of this sort of memory stuff from, right? Like this whole, so why is this showing up under, I'm now clicked on the stages music art in Baltimore and all this stuff is showing up. Right, so this area is, is the other side of the same base that the summer camp is on. This is about two miles from the summer camp, the other end of where the base is. This is also where Ayn Rand's house, near where I told you about Ayn Rand's house, Chatsworth, was also right over there in that area. Um, so this is just weird. <laughs> so I don't know what all of this means, but I found it fascinating the things that came up when I just searched Ranch Club Summer Camp. Right? Like it's bizarre. And there's yeah. no other city popping up besides Baltimore, which is where you went to camp. And it's it's we, we can see the cross came from the fact that there was there's a there's a school in Baltimore called Chatsworth. But I'm pretty certain there's more than one Chatsworth school in across the fifty states of the United States. Look at that. So the fact that these are the only two. Um Look at this, I just found another ad for Gymnastics World and this one is a space theme, right? So I've talked about Hunger Games on my summer camp and Secret yeah. Space Program and that's a space theme. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna take this down now because we could just go forever. Can, but, um, can I show some, can I show my screen for a little yeah, bit? Yeah, I'm gonna make you disable this. Let me just get this out of the way and my screen share and I'll enable your screen share. All right. So guys, this is, we're kind of showing like just on the fly sort of researching synchronicities. Okay, let me close that down. So I, I don't think this is synchronicity. I think we're uncovering <laughs> Well, right, there's well, the synchronicity. There, that's the point of paying attention to these synchronicities is that there's something there. All yeah, right, all yeah. our participants can share. Go ahead. All right, let's see. There we go. We're gonna go right here. Let's start with this. So this right here is a map of Baltimore. So for all the folks who aren't familiar with this area, so let's go right here. It's Washington, D.C., Chesapeake Bay. I live right here right now. This is the Susquehanna River. It's where Randy lives right here. Here's Philly. Here's New York. All right. Going the wrong way. So here we have 
Towson University right here. That's what we're yeah. talking about. This is Baltimore. Um, Baltimore, we can see right here is Johns Hopkins. Yeah. Johns Hopkins is, like we all know Johns Hopkins. If you know a school uh, or a college, well, it's part of like the program. Even if the program is just like the setting up of the structure of the United States. But Johns Hopkins has a very strong like mind control sort of history, but not as strong. But uh, you have to dig a little bit deep to get there. Um, where we are right here, um, da, 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 da. right here is Aberdeen Proving yeah. Ground. This is where the first computer, this is where ENIAC, all of my work which goes into that. This is where that takes place. This is where, where the uh, um, Susquehanna enters into the Chesapeake Bay. Like the Edgeward Arsenal, this is where all the mind control circuit stuff went yeah, on. Right that's here. like MK Search and MK Often and all that stuff. Yes, yes. So we've got Edgewood, we've got Aberdeen, we've got Towson right here. Um, let's see where we can see. Did it see Fort Meade? This is where the NSA is headquartered. Okay. Right. Okay, right. there, there's a place over there called Laurel, right? And of course, yes, over here Laurel, we have, Maryland, right here. Of course, here we have Laurel Canyon, which is in, in, inextricably tied to Chatsworth based on the man, on Charles Manson. <laughs> I'm able to go. Laurel's a weird place. We've got a lot of things. This is where I grew up, Columbia, Maryland. If anyone here is a fam is familiar with um, Ross Ben's work, he did some. He did a real deep analysis of this guy who, um, Benjamin Banneker, who was the real geomancy expert who laid out Washington, D.C., he came right here, Ellicott City. We've got this right here is where you did, where my camp was. This is where all of your West Virginia is. We can okay, see all. Let, 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 let go to where Morgantown, West Virginia is for a second. Okay, Morgantown's right here. So this is probably like a three hour car trip. Look at this. Okay, so so I'm here in Morgantown, right? So Mary Lou Retton, gymnast here from Fairmont, West Virginia, like probably the most famous right American here. gymnast ever, right, right? Fairmont. I'm here in Morgantown. I was uh, at least once a month going to Pittsburgh up here. And I'd say maybe every other month going to Washington DC here. Right, I was going to um, uh, Tyson's Corner, which we've talked about. Right, the way that Tyson's I was right here. Yeah, Tyson's Corner. I've had so they were talking about this place. I went to this competition was over here at Towson, mm -hmm, which is right up there. Yeah, here. So, so let me also throw this out right here. So, right is do you know? Do you remember or had you ever heard of the Greenbrier? Yeah, that's where 9-11 was planned. So Green, exactly. Greenbrier was like, this is the cover story of the Greenbrier. It was built in, I believe, maybe the 40s or 50s as um, where all of Congress would go, the continuity of government yep. where they would go. So that's like one part, but the real continuity of government is all right around here. This is where it is. This is this part of Pennsylvania, just north of Frederick, Maryland. Yep. Um, and then also we have right around here is in Carlisle, which is where the army, um, the army college is, which is kind of like Harvard for if you're in the military, like that's where you get your master's degree. This is built upon like a very, very significant um, native land. This whole area is so Native American rich. Like this was where everything was taking place. This was all usurped. And okay. all of these, all of this was known for what was being, uh, and they built upon it. I'm also seeing here in this um, thing, so I saw Bethesda, Maryland, right? Mm -hmm. When I would go to Washington, D.C., I would stay with my dad's friend, Carlene, who worked for Warren Christopher, who was the Secretary of State at that time. I would stay with her in Bethesda. Mm -hmm. Later, many years later, when I, my sister moved to Washington, D.C. to go to, um, what's the, Howard University, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, I was living with her for a bit, and I got a job over in Bethesda while I was there. But also, when I was in West Virginia, I just even remembered this, I had a gymnastics meet at State College, Pennsylvania, which is Penn State. Right, so I'm circling around back in these places, but I'm also noticing in that same area near Towson, there's an area of town called Bel Air. There's a Bel Air here. 
There's Lancaster, Pennsylvania. There's also a Lancaster about 40 miles from here where I live now. So why is there so many similarities in names of places? Right? It's kind of interesting. They're definitely resonators, yes. Yeah. I'm so I want to go to this, and this is kind of funny. So um, uh, you mentioned the whole thing with Towson University and the whole, like, um, like the, the white power movement and particularly like that whole story. Yeah. So uh, I think I mentioned this before. So this made headlines a couple years ago. Uh, it was when, when yep. uh, uh, Trump was first in office and, and, yep. and a White House intern, did he make a white power hand gesture? And like it's right. un, unproven. Uh, this right there. So this is the guy who they're saying did it. This guy right, right here. This is, this is the, the supposed thing. And you see like everyone's doing something. Yeah. This face right here, do you see that face? Yeah. That's my friggin' nephew. That's my sister's son. <laughs> okay, so this is making me think though. So when I was going to Washington DC and staying in Bethesda, right, with Carleen, she was working for Warren Christopher, who was the Secretary of State. You're talking about all these places Greenbrier, you're talking about, right, like all of this governmental continuity of government stuff, that would be stuff that Secretary of State had things to do with. I was here, right, in Bethesda, and I was traveling constantly between Pennsylvania, West Virginia, and Maryland, always by myself. No one from the team ever went with me. I was always making all of these trips by myself. How, do, like, did you have a car? Yeah. Did you drive cross country? Did you buy a car? I, I, I drove cross country. You drove cross country and then you're driving from Washington to Pittsburgh down to, um, so down to. I was going on a regular basis from Morgantown to Pittsburgh and from Morgantown to uh, Washington DC on a regular basis. And then a lot of our competitions were in this area. I've been to State College, I've been to Towson, I've been to Temple University in Philadelphia, I've been to like right, all the kind of schools that had gymnastics teams throughout this area, right? But the places that I was going to repetitively were all along this line. So Morgantown to Pittsburgh, Morgantown through Frostburg, through Cumberland, through Hangerford, Frederick, Rockville, all this area down here, right? Right down to where where this was. Yeah, and this is where all the continuity of government is. I mean, it's, uh, you, you said something, we could take off the, uh, the screen share. You said something which, which triggered something in my memory. You, you said like we went as missions as- um, Meetup points. Uh, as kids. Yeah. So I, when I was, when I was, I moved, um, I was born in Columbia, Maryland. Uh, my family moved to Richmond, and then we moved back to Columbia, Maryland when I was in first grade. It was the end of first grade, and I was kind of like, you know, I went into, anytime you like, you transfer in the middle of the year, you're always an outcast. That's just like the nature of the humiliation ritual of our school system, you know. Yeah. <laughs> if, you're unlucky, if you're unlucky enough, unless you have like some like uh, natural like ability, which immediately makes you shine out, you're going to be like, you know, you're going to be an outcast for a little bit. So I was an outcast. I remember being an outcast in first grade. And I could, I like had enough like social understanding to know as a first grader that like this is my lot in life as the social act outcast. And sometime, and I have no idea why, like um, in second grade, um, I was befriended. I became best friends with who was like the most popular kid in school. And then my social, my social world trajectory changed completely. I can remember meeting almost every single person I like my friends, uh, but this kid was particularly significant in my um, childhood, from um, second grade on to when he moved away in, in sixth grade. Um, and he took me out of this very, very, um, like, uh, uh, like I was a very, very shy child. And I don't remember how we met. And when I think about this, like you talked about like some of the programs, like the twinning program, like if I had a twin, this was my twin. Mm -hmm. And the way that this, this twin was removed from my life was immensely traumatic to me, like, you know, in my personal story, but that's not what, what I, what I want to share with. That was just a little bit of backdrop. 
So me and my friend who out of the blue, uh, well, well, I'll go back to this. So me and my friend, uh, beginning in second grade, third grade. So this is probably 1982, 1983. Um, we snuck out of our house every single time we would spend the night at each other's houses. Yep. And I remember this very clearly. And we would go on missions and adventures. Mm -hmm. And I can remember like breaking into schools, like not stealing anything, but like this is the sort of shit which we were doing. And I'm like, where is this coming from? Like, that was not necessary. That was not necessary. And we used to have, like, there would sometimes he would just be sleepwalking and we would wake up, like, and I would just come along with him. But there was something very, very bizarre. And he was brought, he moved to Colorado Springs, which was another one of these, these, like, these epicenters. Um, <laughs> so he sends me a, a, a text message two days ago out of the blue. Yeah, And um, he came back, he left when I was in sixth grade and he came back when I was in, in, in high school. And I can't really explain why, but I had an internal conflict whenever he came back that I felt immensely uncomfortable in his presence. Yet he was from ages first, from second grade to, to sixth grade, mm -hmm. that he was my closest friend. And he pulled me out of like what I said, like this, this like lot in life of being like a social outcast to like being like on the top of like the social hierarchy. And I have no idea why I have these feelings. And I also know that we did, like my memories are strange. I have a very, very strange memory of like doing trick or treating by ourselves in third grade and being very, very far away from my, from like my mm -hmm. home. And like, I don't know how I'm going to get home and freaking the fuck out as a child. It's like, I don't know how to get home, like being terrified yeah. uh, of being so far away. And my sense is, is like, um, and the reason I'm bringing this up is because of your points of this travel, what you just did, like all this travel by yourself, like, why are you doing this travel? Like, if you know anything about what these programs are about, is like, you only remember what you remember. Like, it, it makes sense to you in your memories if you can have them. But there are some things that just don't make sense. Well, I, I would love to be able to figure out where it is. But like, so can you bring up that map of that area again real fast? So Certainly. what you were saying about, I'm going to just address this. The, the kids and the, the kid you hung out with, I had a lot of this stuff too, right? Like I would oftentimes befriend a, per, a person, usually a female, that was like a grade or two older than me. And they would be an intense part of my life for a period of time. And we'd do all this sort of mischievous stuff or interesting stuff or weird stuff or whatever. And then they'd sort of move away and whatnot. Um, but I did lot, I've had that same Halloween experience you're talking about, right? And and as far as the twinning goes, like sometimes it's twinning and sometimes it's like, so one of the things I've realized is I was often paired with a female that was a little bit older than me, right, in whatever was going on. And I don't know if you know who Danny Katz is. I do my, my podcast words with her, but she's really interesting, right? Like, so she and I did gymnastics together as a kid and she was always, she's older than, she's a few years older than me, but she's always the, per the girl, the older girl on the team that I thought was so cool. I thought she was so cool, right? And um, we have a lot of things very similar about our background, right? She's also Jewish. She grew up, she lives in Van Nuys, which is where our gym, she lived in Van Nuys, which is where our gym was, which is where I live now. But we have a lot of things in common. Her main parental relationship was with her father, similar to me and whatnot. Anyway, she quit gymnastics when she was like, I don't know, 12 or 13, and I was probably like nine or 10, right? And she kind of disappeared from my life. I remember running into her at the mall one time. She was working at the guest store, and I was like, oh my God, that's Danny Katz from gymnastics, and then, right? I thought, but that sticks out in my mind, that memory of like, it was so important that I saw her again, not just like any old person. It was like, wow, I was like, this is amazing. And then never heard, didn't have anything to do with her for years and years. Facebook comes around and like lots of people I did gymnastics with, we kind of friended up and whatever, but we didn't ever talk to each other. During, so she and I were friends on Facebook, but somehow during the whole like Pizzagate thing that was going on, like she started posting stuff that I saw. And like, 
I was like, oh, this person might be like awake too. That's interesting. Like I used to like Pink Danny Cats was so cool when I was a kid, like let's get together, right? And so of all the people we did gymnastics with, we're the only ones that are like awake, right? Like that, you know, we're, we're talking about this. None of the other gymnastics people were weighing in on this kind of thing, right? So she and I get together and we start comparing notes about things, right? And literally we figured out that like, she, we're like three or four years apart in age. We haven't seen each other in 30 years at this point, but that both of us have this a, a, a particularly traumatic mem memory of childhood that is the same that happened on the same day, a day that they brought a photographer to the gym to do photographs of us and didn't tell us that was going to happen. And both of us remember that as like one of the worst days of our lives. And I've tracked back that like that's where some of the traumatic sexual like ritual abuse kind of happened with some of these photographers for gymnastics kind of stuff. But how is it that two people that didn't see each other for 30 years and were a different age, we were in different groups at the gym, both the first thing we brought up when we were talking about like sh shit that happened that sucked at GO, right? It's weird, right? And so as she and I have be been friendly the last couple of years and worked together and on the podcast, even like Elisa has said, that sort of twinning aspect, the idea that we're sort of paired and mirror each other is very obvious to some people in the way we work together now, right? So it is interesting the way this stuff happens. What did this guy say when he caught? So she showed up when I was really starting to come out in the media and talk about some of this kind of stuff. What did he say when he texted you? Uh, I think it said, um, where are you at, bro? check out my model photographs and i didn't respond that's very interesting i i i have i've got like so there, it, it gets kind of interesting so i've got like an internal thing which i've got an internal block i don't i don't feel comfortable with whenever like this guy reaches out mm -hmm. and i don't you know for whatever reason there's something inside like psychologically which is very uncomfortable with this so, so um, yeah. there was in my small little elementary school in my um, in my uh, um, my year, which I guess I graduated elementary school. So I, I moved there in first grade, and then I said, like this guy, this guy was like on the peak of the um, of the the social hierarchy. I mean, there's a social hierarchy in first grade in elementary school. I at least said this uh, how they had a program in Columbia. And the other guy who was, um, was an exceptional elite athlete. Mm -hmm. So I can remember this very, very clearly. When I was in first grade going, and everyone was playing, I came from Richmond, Virginia, and everyone was playing soccer. And I came from Richmond and no one played soccer, I'd never seen it before. And there's this one kid who was in first grade who was playing with the fifth graders and was schooling all of the fifth graders. Like that's how good he was. And so I went throughout like uh, high school or uh, throughout high school with with um, the first person I left was exceptionally talented, like theatrically and musically. And um, he went down a certain path. And then um, this guy was exceptionally talented um, uh, athletically. In fact, in so much to a fact that he was on the cover of Sports Illustrated, not Sports Illustrated Kids. Sports right. Illustrated, like 1989, like as a high schooler, as a high school soccer player. Wow. So the thing which was interesting was the, uh, he and I were, were like, we knew each other, we're friends, but we weren't particularly close, not like me and the other guy. The other guy was, was friends with them. But all three of us kind of like had like, particularly in our 20s and 30s, like a leveling off. Yeah. Um, and I don't know what happened to that guy. But there was like, um, there in, if I were to go and look back, uh, I would suggest that there was definitely like, a, 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 a may, like not exactly a twinning, but there was a parallel between all three. Yeah. And there was a destruction, just like what you said. Like there was, I could remember, I remember like, a, again, like, you know, I'm saying this as an adult, like, you know, it's, it's, it's not a big deal as an adult, but to a child, the, psych, the psychological profile of a child, like certain things are going to be very, very scarring, such as I would imagine, like, you know, just the psychology of being a young girl or a young woman and everything of being in gymnastics and then surprising you with like a photographer coming and like not being mentally prepared and all of that sort of stuff. And so things like that happened to me, like 
uh, that would have been psychologically scarring to me as a child, but as an adult, doesn't seem like a big deal. And this is, I think, part of like a programming. We talk about twinning. How did our conversation begin today? I was like, wow, look how much you and I look alike. Yeah. Why yeah. are we having this conversation here? And why is like all of this stuff that made us like outcast five years ago suddenly is like, okay, you're on to something in terms of understanding <laughs> what has been done on a, on like a nationwide, if not earthwide level in terms of the psychological warfare. Okay. So we're going all over the place here, but what you just said reminded me of and I've talked about this before on the show, but I haven't told you this, right? So I was, we'll bring that map up, back up in a second because I noticed something there too. All, All right. right. So I had this experience at a party that was not too far from where I am right here back in the mid 2000s, right? I, went to the, I used to go to this recurring party called Absurd that was absolutely, I mean, it was the weirdest things would happen there, right? It was in this, this particular party was in a space one of those, it was like it's a warehouse, but they have all the rounded edges that are really good for sound. So you kind of feel like you're inside the music as opposed to listening to it, right? And I had this weird experience there. So I was, I did some mushrooms, but a lot of times I have weird experiences not, but I was on mushrooms. And this kind of music that, the, that Absurd Parties had was like this sort of very acidy style tech house, like from London, right? And um, I'm there and one of the things I noticed pretty early on in the, um, in the evening was that there was that somebody on the other side of the room from me that looked sort of like me, but it was a male, right? And, um, and I thought that was interesting and I kept looking over and every time I would go over to try and go to the other side of the room to get closer to him to take a, a look, he'd cross over and go to the, side, the other side of the room that I had just come from. Like, it's like, it was like we couldn't possibly be on the same side of the room at the same time. And this goes on like a lot. I'm looking at him like, oh, he really looks like me, but just a little bit more masculine version, like, or whatnot. Like, this is going on for hours. And then at one point, like, something happened and I was kind of out of my body and on the back, like, like on the back wall of the room, right? And I watched these two things sort of come together and I realized it was like the masculine and feminine aspect of myself. We had even been wearing the same thing, basically, right? Like, I had on like some black pants and a white tank top he had on black pants and more of a men's kind of white shirt or whatever and we looked our hair was both pulled back in the ponytail kind of like you or i and it was like whoosh and all of a sudden there was just the one of us and there wasn't the two anymore right so it's kind of interesting so what we're talking about is like twins on the opposite side of the room here we're talking about like a twinning sometimes the opposite side of the country even with not just people but these places pull the map back up <laughs> yes, Captain. <laughs> <laughs> so we've already talked about the similarity in the names of places between where you grew up over here in this area and where I was. But I'm also noticing that there's an area over here called Shady Side, right here. Uh, I can't see where you're pointing. So what's? Tell me something else. It's near. It's about, it's about an inch and a half below Annapolis. Like four an inch and a half below Annapolis. Annapolis is right. Over to the right. Here. Shady side. Yes. Yeah. So I I don't think I've ever been there. But when I used to go to Pittsburgh, the area of Pittsburgh that I was hanging out in was called Shady Side. Now, what if there is like some kind of connection or portal between those places? And what if there's a connection and portal between Lancaster, Pennsylvania and Lancaster, California, between Bel Air, California, uh, yeah. and Bel Air, California, between like there was several of these places that I saw here, right? So we're talking about twin people, but also twin cities. There's Pasadena right here. My dad's girlfriend, my dad right now lives in Pasadena. I've spent a lot of time there as a kid. Lots of, uh, that's where JPL is, Jet Propulsion Laboratory. Right. Right? That's the probably the most Masonic city in the entire country. Right, so there's Pasadena number. Pasadena is. Yeah, Pasadena, California. Right, so there's a lot of these places with similar names. There's Hollywood right here. Look at that. There's California. Right, this is all pretty interesting. Okay. Yeah. Okay, but also go back up. 
I was gonna know I was trying to notice something else on the path. So when I would go, my typical pattern, because it was pretty typical, would be I'd be in here, like I'd come down to Washington, DC. I was staying in Bethesda, right? I was staying in Bethesda. I'd usually go like I'd come down on like a Friday night or Saturday morning, be in Bethesda. Saturday, I'd go into Washington, D.C., and, like, I'd go to Georgetown and, like, all the cool, funky places in Washington, D.C., and then uh, if I was, yeah, and then if I, maybe I'd go to a museum, maybe I'd go over to, like, you know, somewhere near the Smithsonian, I might go to a museum, and then on Sunday, before I left, I'd go to Tyson's Corner, right, I'd go to the shopping mall, and then I would go home from there, I would leave from there to go um, back to Morgantown, West Virginia. So where, okay, where, where? You want to go West Virginia? Where, so here's Tyson's Corner. Yeah, I, I was zooming in on Tyson's. I wanted to go pull up the street view, but uh, so here's Tyson's, Tyson's right here. And then I'm going back to Morgantown. West over here. And so I think the way that I went was this way that went through, um, I, I don't remember if I went this way or if I went around this way. I remember going through Frostburg and Cumberland. Yeah, you probably came up here, then you went out. Um, but 70, I, I think. drove yeah. somewhere. So, like, I that remember, like, I remember particularly that one time, but I can't say that it was only once. Where I remember this Leesburg place too, um, where I pulled over because I got so sleepy. The same part of the road, I would always get really sleepy. I'd be like fighting. I, you know, even if it was the winter, I'd have the window down and I'd be like freezing, but still falling asleep. And I pulled over somewhere because I was so tired. And it was the middle of the afternoon, like two, right? Like I was trying to get back to West, about a three hour drive back to West Virginia, trying to get back before it was too late, right? Um, so I pulled over and, and I pulled into a Pizza Hut parking lot and I fell asleep. And when I woke up, it was pitch black. It was like late at night, right? And I, like I had slept the night before. It wasn't like I'd been up all night partying. That was not during my partying days, right? So somewhere along here, I had a missing long period of time and all these places are within a stone's throw, right? Yeah. Yeah, so it's kind of, I, I don't know what I'm looking at, but I just was one, I'm trying to figure out what the path back would be. So I was staying in Bethesda, but I would always go to Tyson's on the way out. So I don't think I was going back on the 270. I think I was going up this way. I think I went to Frederick. So I think I went from, to, through Leesburg. I think I went over to Frederick and then up to here through Hagerstown. Yeah. yeah, you probably took 15 up here to 70. Flintstone. <laughs> right, that's a funny thing to have, like Flintstones. <laughs> right? like, yeah. the, the cartoons are mind control. So anyway, it's just kind of interesting, this whole area. But the, I, I'm very surprised at how well, many- Well, I want to say this. Keep in mind, this whole area, this is all like, I, I don't know how familiar you are with like, CIA um, yeah. uh, history, but you know how they call it the farm and like yeah. all their training? Yeah. That's where all of this is. This is all the farm. This is all, this is yeah. all espionage. This is all like, you know, if you want to call it deep state sort of, like that's where this world lives. Yeah. Uh, you know where some of the highest concentrations of billionaires anywhere or in the United States are? Like everyone knows the billionaires in like, New York and the Hamptons and like out in California, right here, this area, right in in um, central Virginia, Virginia. Like north of Charlottesville, like south of Leesburg. It's the most beautiful area, but this is what like the point I'm trying to make is like this is where movers and shakers and things happen. This is, and this if you is, haven't heard of it, it's because you're not supposed to. If yeah. you don't remember it, it's because it's been wiped. Yep. Yep. It's very interesting. And what's also interesting to me is how many places, not just places here in this area that have the same name as where I grew up, but places that have the same names as cities that I went to multiple times in my life, right? Like, so I'm seeing, I saw an area called Gainesville, right? Mm -hmm. Had gymnastics meet. It's in Gainesville, Florida, and went on a job interview there once. I had, I'm seeing, so Deerfield here is also a beach in Florida that I've been to. Um, uh, Middletown, uh, it, it, I don't know why I'm thinking, oh my, that's my grandfather's middle name. Um, uh, there, like, but there's all, there's like multiple, I mean, Oakland over here, there's Oakland, California, Davis, there's Davis, California, Parsons, I just talked about Parsons, Jack Parsons Laboratory, right? Like, what if, like, all these places that have similar names, there's like an 
some kind of portal or some kind of like what if literally to go to california you go over here to this park called california yeah like what if like this like they hide things in plain sight right like a magician when he went to england because what we have right so um I talked about this uh, when we were talking about Tyson's before. Where's Tyson's? I lost Tyson's in here. Back over. Here we have. So in Tyson's corner. Okay, Oak Hill. Look at this. Oak Hill. I used to coach gymnastics in a, in a place called Oak Hill in like outside of Austin, right? So we, there's a there's a triangle there called the Oak Hill Triangle. It's a bizarre place. Like it's definitely a place where there's some, you know, possibility to move into another space. If my if my memory is correct, I believe Oak Hill had like one of the best basketball programs like in all of America. Like that was like always like ranked in the top of like USA Today best best uh, um, high school teams. Like it had a lot of energy going on there. A lot. All right. So here we are. Here at Tyson's Corner. Okay. I haven't been to Tyson's Corner for at least 15 years. So there's Tyson's too. Yeah. Uh, where's, there's Tyson's parking lot. Yeah. Um, I'm going to switch back to this. Where's Route 7 on here? There's 123. There's Tiffany. So I used to work in this building right here, uh, the shops at Fairfax. Let's see if I could see my own. Uh, da, 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 da. You know what's fucking weird, too? This building. So this building is where I used to work on, like top floors. I used to work for a company, Intelligent. In the basement of, I believe it's this building right here, is where the entire east coast of the internet, all of the interconnection, this was the linchpin right here in this building. Top secret. Like it's, it's, no, it's probably been moved now because they talk about it now on Wikipedia. It was called May East. Yeah, right yes, here. yeah. This is Tyson's Mall right here. Like I was across the street from it. You could walk there to it. Um, but like when you talk about this idea of like jumping from one to another, like mm -hmm. this is where at least the energy for that on one level exists. Yeah, okay. So listen to this. And I just had this memory. In Tyson's Corn, in that mall, I think in the fancy one, right? Okay. There was a restaurant called Magic Pan, the Magic Pan. And the great place, the great place, right? So you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, I know so that. When I was little, my there's a there was a fancy mall. There's a there's a fancy mall in Woodland Hills here called the Promenade, right? And it's like where you have like your Neiman Marcus and your Saks Fifth Avenue and the nicer stuff, right? My mom used to take me there, and there was a restaurant in there, the Magic Pan, the Crepe Place, and I always I always wanted to go there, right? And uh. They took it away eventually. Like by the time I was like 10 or 12, it was gone, right? But when I went to the Tyson's place and saw it there, I was like, oh my God, the magic pan. So what if there's a connection between the magic pan and I've never seen one anywhere else other than in Tyson's or Tyson Square. There was the one in the promenade and then there was the one there. I've never seen it. I've been to the malls all over the country. I've never seen it anywhere else. And it was there all that time later. Right, so like, is that's just weird, right? Then it's called the magic pan. Well, what's interesting is I have um, as is as drawn to the magic pan as you are. I have in my memory like is a strong repulsion to the magic pan. Mm -hmm. Like I don't think I've like any strong repulsions to any other restaurants, but the magic pan, like I was repulsed. Here's here's Tyson's uh, the fancy one right there. Okay, and there's look 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 what's right there. Look what's right there. Saks Fifth Avenue. Correct. And look at that doorway. That there little portal? portally kind of doorway. Okay, so here's the thing with Magic Pan. I don't, at a certain point, I didn't like it anymore, right? But I went there with my mom, so it was special. And I remember we stopped going to the Magic Pan because they took the thing off the menu that she, I don't know that I really liked the food, but I didn't grow up with my mom. I didn't live with her. So like anything I got to do with my mom was special. I always preferred going to, there was another restaurant in the same mall called Anna Miller's that I liked better, right? And, and I always wanted to go there. Um, but uh, uh, 
we went to Magic Pan because my mom liked it. And then they took something off the menu that she liked. And that was always her complaint when we were a kid is they would always take the thing off the menu that she, that, you know, she, that she liked or whatever. But it's interesting that we both have these strong memories of the Magic Pan. Yeah. Right? So we got Tyson what is right that? there. Wolf Trap? What is that? Uh, Wolf Trap is, uh, so this whole area right here. So this is Tyson's. And then da, 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 right here, where do we have um, Dulles? Da, 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 da. There is Dulles. That's the airport Dulles. Um, Wolf Trap was, is a um, nationally recognized like outdoor pavilion um, for uh, performing arts. And it's right in Reston. I talked about Reston before being a planned community. That's where Reston is. Right here is where Langley is, right? It's right okay, around there. So right by the Wolf Trap is in, in, interesting because I've talked about, Nish has talked about, uh, there's a guy named White Wolf Von Atzigan. Like the wolf stuff is pretty bit prevalent in the mind control programming. There's actually a new TV show, new series that just came out called Raised by Wolves. Check, like, check, you should check out the sort of advertisement photos for Raised by Wolves, but this is kind of in Trap Road. Yeah, we're, we're, this is near Wolf Trap right here. Wow. So this is, and this is all, this is all like, um, as we call, you know, as they would say, like the deep state, the people who are like, who run like the behind the scenes in Washington, D.C. This is, this is, this is, this is the corridor right here. Like, you know, right here is, they don't even know where they, they even have Langley risk. Um, where would Langley be? It's right by McLean. So it's, uh, where do you even see Langley? I saw it a little while ago, but I haven't seen it for a bit. Well, Langley, you, obviously that's where the, that's where the CIA is. And that's, that's right here. It's right north of, uh, um, of McLean. There's Wolf Trap. Uh, I used to live the, uh, this whole area, this is um, Arlington, where we were talking about before with the uh, with the shooter. Mm -hmm. And what this is kind of interesting. I, I don't know how this turned into like us going through like our 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 past. But I used to live right here, God, um, in Arlington, in this small little subdivision. And I was doing research on Eric Schmidt. And yeah. he grew up in the same subdivision where I lived. Yeah. Like I lived there as a, as an adult, like when I was like in my late twenties, I lived there. Yep. Yep. So all of this kind of stuff, right? So part of the purpose of doing this, right, is not just, oh, let's relive our past and figure out where the mind control was. There's something significant about these places right? And there was something significant about our experiences there. And as we're trying to figure out how this, the mechanisms of how these things work and the, uh, the, the networks and the, the connections between places, we need to keep these things in mind, right? Because there was a time when we were obviously somehow being run through these places and spaces, right? There was something that was attracting us to them or the, you know, maybe if, you know, maybe there is some kind of connective portal or whatever. And if we had access to it once before, maybe we have access to it again, right? Kind of thing, or, or we just start looking for these connections. There's something about this summer camp stuff. There's something about all these places, but I, I find it really odd how there's just so many places with the same names right there where you were and right, right where I was, right? So we're not saying that we've conclusively proven anything here, but we're looking for similarities, synchronicities, connections, um, you know, all of this, all of this kind of stuff, because we're trying to find that cohesive string. We're trying, like, you know, eventually you start to, if each of, if those of you who are interested, go back and look at some things from your past and see if there are similarities. Like the more we start to compile information, we can figure out what is the similarity between what places and, and, and then maybe really start to understand how some of this works. Um, because it was a complete and total aside that I was plucked out of whatever I was doing here in California and decided to go on this year long adventure over in that neck of the woods and was magnetically attracted to all of these same places that you were. Without a doubt, and you're absolutely right. Like this was, I think, if anything, it was a demonstration of 
you don't know what you're looking for, but you have to look in your own backyard. Mm -hmm. and, and that's both literal and metaphorical. And your own backyard is your own history. And when you can find like, you know, quote unquote, a twin or a reflective person, you know, you know, we have a reflection within one another, then it becomes that much um, uh, easier to triangulate. Okay, so I think what I want to do is obviously, like we've talked about, for people who would like to join us and follow along on the next summer camp where we're going to do some more and different kind of stuff, we're going, to, like, we're going to keep track of our synchronicities and things over this period of time. So we're going to talk about that. I just completely lost my train of thought. Oh, I was going to recommend that people, because of what you're talking about, this reflection or this connection from one person to another or this twinning, people go and watch the TV series Sensate. Have you seen Sensate, Michael? Mm -hmm. Okay. It, there's plenty of time for you to watch. It, it's a, two seasons of eight, eight episodes each. And it gets into this ability of two people to be connected and actually start to like um, experience the, uh, each other's realities, right? B based on a connection that they have across the world, right? So people go take a look at Sense8, start paying attention and maybe keeping a journal of the instances you notice of synchronicities, similarities, telepathic experiences, and also symbols. If like you see it, like I have a particular symbol that just keeps showing up over and over and over for the past couple of years. And every time I know that there's like something there, you know, for, for, for me, right? Like I pay attention to that symbol and I know other people are starting to notice that. And then somebody shows me their symbol and then I'm seeing their symbol all of a sudden that I didn't notice before. And I'm noticing that it's very similar in the way it works, the way my symbol was working and whatnot. So I think these are the things we're gonna start tracking, following along and figuring out how they work. Um, was there anything else? So we just really got through sort of one thing. Was there anything else you wanted to hit on in the first hour before we move over into the patrons hour? Was that one hour? That was, an, that was about an hour and 25 minutes or so. All right. Uh, there was a lot of stuff I wanted to talk about, but I think that's a, we, this is a good place to stop and like we'll save it for the second half. Um, I want to I wanna mention, and I think this ties into it. I think this ties in. Like I always go back to the CIA. I've been doing some really, really like, uh, uh, tangible, fascinating, unexplainable um, research. I'm going to present it on my own YouTube channel probably later this week if I can get, I hope I get it out, but I want to touch upon it. It has to do with Doctor Who, has to do with the World Health Organization. It has to do with like all of the stuff we're talking about. And it's like unbelievably like uh, tangible, but at the same time, you're like, you're going to be like left slack jawed. So I want to talk, I want to talk about that. And like, you know, I'm kind of being vague to encourage anyone to, to come around for the second hour because it's good stuff. So that's totally up a couple of weeks ago at this conspiracy cocktail, this guy, Jimmy, who, uh, Jeff, my friend, Jeff, who you've met there and, and Jimmy, um, Jimmy is an interesting guy. He works a lot on like, um, blockchain technologies and things like that. He brought forward some lines from Doctor Who about what programs and spells actually are. And so we were, that was part of the topic of the conversation. Wow. There's like a quote within the movie, wasn't that what he was talking about? A quote where it explains if it's, they only call things uh, programs to make people more comfortable with them, but a program is really the same thing as a spell. Wasn't that kind of what it was about? It was something like that, right? So it's interesting that that's the second time and he, he, that, that same kind of connection. There was another thing that I did in the last few weeks where somebody was talking about a connection between Doctor Who and the World Health Organization in a totally different way than, than what you're sort of uh, talking about. But um, I've never actually seen uh, any of the Doctor Who shows. Yeah. So like, yeah. Uh, but I know, I just know that it exists and this research has shown something and it, it connects through, through uh, Rockefeller, it co connects through all espionage and it reflect, it connects through like Donald Trump and it is so friggin' weird. All right. <laughs> All right, guys. So I guess Doctor Who is up to if people want to take some look at that. Uh, if you want to catch the second half of the show, you can join us at patreon.com forward slash off planet media. You know where to find me. You found me here. You can find Michael at susquehannaalchemy.com. We'll see you on the other side.